you ever have to think about your own freedom? Have you ever had to fight for it? I risked my life to stand here today and share my journey to freedom. I was born in 1993 in the city of Hesan. Hesan is northern part of North Korea. As you see here, this is a picture of my family. In my family, most of men were belonging to workers of party of North Korea, and most of women were, came from political families. Belonging to workers of party of North Korea is a huge privilege, privilege but most of people are not so lucky. And this is a picture of me when I was young. <laughs> I had so much fun playing with my friends, skiing, fishing, and sometimes I played Mario game, Super Mario game with my friends. But my child memory is quite different with you. I often saw the dead bodies on the street, and whenever I go to school, I saw lots of dead bodies. And Sometimes, dead bodies floating on the river, and I never felt any emotion for that. That was my routine life. In 2002, when I was nine years old, my whole world came crashing down. My hero, my father, got arrested for his illegal business. He sold the metal to China, and he got sentenced for 17 years. In North Korea, we have a Songbun system where the regime puts people into street classes. We, with the government in charge of food distribution and social classifications, it always determines who would acquire wealth and who would starve. And we also have guilty by association system. That means my father's crimes is my crimes. I was a criminal too. <coughs> when I was nine years old, I knew what I was going to do when I was turned 15 or 50. If I didn't go to die for the starvation, I would be becoming a farmer forever. I would, dream, I would never dream of myself to getting, a mar getting married with a man who have a bad ground, or imagine myself to go to university. A turning point in my life was when I saw the movie Titanic. It was fascinating to me that anyone would make a movie out of such a shameful story. I was wondering if the directors and actors would be killed. That's what would happen to anyone make a movie out of such a shameful story in North Korea. I was so curious. How could they release such a movie? My curiosity didn't end there. When I was growing up in North Korea, the regime taught us that dying for the regime was the most honorable thing that anyone could do. When we were young, my sister and I saw the movie showing how beautiful it could be to die for the regime. And we were inspired by it. And we pledged we would be willing to die, if necessary, for the Kims. When I was growing up in North Korea, the only story I heard about the outside world was how bad it was and how lucky we were to be in North Korea. The North Korean regime always tried to convince me to do something for it, to die for it controlling what we sing, say, wear, listen to, or think what we want. But Titanic showed him a human story about love, beauty, humanity. It wasn't propaganda, but a story about people dying for love, a man willing to die for a woman. It showed me a taste of freedom. It changed my thinking. It changed the way I saw the regime and their endless propaganda. But the, 
Watching this movie's consequences was so cruel. When I was nine years old, I saw my best friend's mother publicly executed. Her crime, watching a Hollywood movie. In North Korea, we are not free to sing, say, or listen to or watch. Nothing is a lie. The government's telling us what to do, what to see, what to say, what to even think. In 2007, after my father got out from the prison to get treatment, we decided to escape. We had to get out from that hair. So after my sister disappeared four days later, me and my mother went to China. We climbed three mountains and crossed a frozen river. The day I escaped North Korea, I saw my mother raped. The rapist was a Chinese broker. He had targeted me. I felt I lost something in humanity. My mother allowed herself to be raped in order to protect me. My father died in China after, for the, his colon cancer. And it was 2009, February 19th, 7.30 in the morning. I sat beside him, and he didn't breathe. And I couldn't even cry because I was so afraid. What if other people hear me? I had to be invisible. There was nobody I could call to say my father died, and I buried him at 3 a.m. in secret. And in the mountain, I thought, our life is less fair than animals. What kind of world is not allowing me to cry? My father died, but I didn't even have that freedom to cry. Into the, after my father passed away, my mother and I decided to escape to Mongolia. Along with the five people in our team, we walked and crawled across the Gobi Desert, evading Chinese police, kidnappers, and wild anim animals. Armed with knives, we were ready to kill ourselves if we were going to be sent back to North Korea. We begged the Mongolian soldiers who caught us not to send us back to North Korea. We wanted to live as humans. At last, in 2009, I made it to South Korea. Even though I escaped, I wasn't completely free from the regime's ideology. I still thought the North Korean dictators had special power. I even thought the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-il could read my mind. I was not free to think. In 2011, having the freedom to read whatever I wanted, I happened to read the book Animal Farm. It showed me that Kim Sar dictators are using power to oppress people, and that North Koreans deserve freedom. The book symbolized freedom to me. In North Korea, the regime says they are so strong, but the reality is that they are so weak, so they can't allow other ideas. As I read it, even when I read the Communist Manifesto, I thought this is freedom, the freedom to read opposing ideas. But also I had to adjust a new system. To be honest, I had to start learning how to use toilet first. I didn't know what it was. 
and I had to start what is cash, what is card. I didn't know bank, I never used a bank. So I had to learn about the card and new vocabularies and what is shopping and how to go to use a play and what is a buffet. And just I start learning from the beginning like a baby. And lots of people think change in North Korea is impossible, but they might not realize that huge changes have already happened. The outside media and information are setting us free. The change that I went through is why I'm optimistic, that if we can ex export North Koreans to outside the world, we can make a difference. I hope we can work together to make something beautiful happen. And lots of people ask me, how can we help North Koreans? And there are many ways, but I would like to mention three for now. One, educate yourself so you can raise awareness about the human rights crisis in North Korea. Two, help and support North Korean refugees who are trying to escape to freedom. Three, petition China to stop repatriation. We have to shed a light on the darkest place in the world. It isn't just North Korean human rights. It's our rights that North Korean dictators have violated for seven decades. <coughs> North Korea is indescribable. No humans deserve to be oppressed just because of their birthplace. We need to less focus on the regime and more on the people. Why is so important Kim Jong-un getting fat? And why is so funny his hairstyle is so funny? People are dying there. In China, there are many refugees hiding in there. And 70% of North Korean women and teenage girls are being victimized and sometimes sold for as little as $200. We can use that money for one day, but Girls are just like me, and you are being sold, and being raped, and being killed sometimes for the $200. But the reality is that nobody knows them, and if they know, nobody cares about them. These girls just like me and you, they are not different. They are just the same human beings as we are. We have to let the world know what kind of injustice our people are going through. It's really hard to say why I have to emphasize why we have to care about this as all human beings. We have to care about this issue. If we ignore them, who are going to save them? I'm so lucky. So that's why I'm standing here to tell you my story. But we have to remember the people who are being killed for watching a movie. And we have to remember people who are being sold for $200. Please join with me as we make this a global movement to free North Koreans. Please fight with me for this injustice. Please cry with me for my people, for our people. Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Let's do what we can to eliminate the injustice of the Kim regime. Thank you very much.